right, so we've got our honey pulled. We've moved into the garage. You want to be in an area where there's, it's hot. The bees cannot come in from outside into where you're working. You're going to have a few residual bees that have followed you in, of course. But uh, we pulled a few frames. Corinne's uncapping right now. Let me kind of get a close up here. She just ran the cold knife up the comb, opened all the cells. Now she's going back with the capping scratcher, taking care of corners, missed caps. Corey, you want to get Mama a couple more while we're... Okay. Of course, bringing frames that are capped to Corinne. Keep her tank loaded here and keep her, keep her working. Good full frames. Solid cap. Won't worry about any of the uh, moisture content. If you'll show them the uncapping tank. You'll see she follows the top bar, bottom bar. That just took off 95% all the cappings. She'll open up the cell she missed, turn and do the other side. She's uncapping over a uncapping tank which has a gate valve in the bottom. When it's uh, when we're done all the honey that is in the wax capping drips down through a filter it'll be in the bottom of the tank when all that's drained we'll run it through a strainer into the bucket down here as well got a strainer stand built to hold the strainer under the extractor when I start spinning the frames, you'll, I'll open the gate and we'll run straight through into the bucket. Uh, small four frame extractor, ratchet strap to the table, slow down some of the walking. Or tell them what your job is. I taste all the honey. You do what? I taste all the honey. How's this batch taste? Pretty good. How's it compared to the last? Um, not as flavorful. A little richer, a little richer. Yeah. It was not as what? What'd you Floral. So this works really good, but if there's any pollen, it'll grab that pollen in the cells and tear up the comb. So does it seem like you have to use your capping scratcher more with the plane? Or no. No, it goes through it real equally well. Equally as well, just it as does, long as it there's, does yep. cut the caps off real nice. And you just put that plane on it and it goes right down. Try to keep fresh water rags for our hands. Keep all the honey cleaned up as much as possible when we're running, or you'll have it all over everything. You get all your equipment sticky, and it just adds to how much more you've got to clean up at the end of the day. Uncapped frames go back into the supers. These will be set out tomorrow. Bees will clean them up. I'll bring them in, store them on Paramount. I lacked one frame. Filling the extractor. Of course, all kinds of extractors on the market. I'm going to go ahead and 
an opener gate to a bottom tank getting full. Yeah, that's the way it works. in the cells remember I can't stress enough that the heat is your friend when you're extracting honey if it's not hot where you're at you won't remove a hundred percent of the honey from the cell so you're kind of cheating yourself So once that's been turned, you just start that process over. Honey cleared. Pork. Pork, could you put that in the empty box over there behind you? And they just go back into the empty super. And you start the process over. All right, I've got a I've got a full bucket here below the extractor. I've reloaded some frames that Corinne had ready to spin, but I've shut my gate so I can let this honey catch up in the strainer. Now what I want to do is I want to take out this bucket, put in a fresh bucket under it, then I will lid the full bucket. This can get a little messy. I, I think I've let a lot of this drain. If you turn that filter slightly that way and go, I didn't see anything drip or hit the floor. This is a full five gallon bucket now. If I'd run another run, I'd have had over what I wanted in it. We've kept all the wax bees anything else that might have got in there out with the strainer so it's all clean strained honey the next next thing that will happen to it is it will be ran off in jars Cora's got uh, got me a little bucket started here that she uh, been putting wax in she tends to eat a little bit of that as we go typically have a spatula up Corey's here. Of course got it. Oh, that's what I need right there. Thank you, Corey. And all you have to do is this stuff is still damp and wet enough to come loose from the screen. And it's not like I need to get 100%. I just need to get it where the honey flows. These double strainers are really nice 
make sure when you're doing this that you're conscious of staying over the strainer or you'll get it down in that fresh clean pail that we just changed to and then if it's, you can end up having to uh, restrain a five gallon bucket and it's it's just more work and I've done it and you don't want to have to so try to be as careful with it as you can. That's got really all I need to get. And then you'll put that out for the bees when you get this done. Will, this will inevitably end up going back to the bees. Now this bucket goes right back in under the extractor. Always check your gates. Make sure that they are tight as you can get them. You don't want to be running honey. Thinking all is well and look down and you've got a puddle coming out from under your bucket. And then we're ready to go again. I'll open my gate back up. It starts flowing again. I continue to bend the frame. something to make it where you're not holding the barrel and spinning and somebody else is spinning you're holding the barrel. Once again running a tangical extractor. Each frame has to be turned before I can remove them. Here's the empty. Here's the honey that has to be spun. by the way that honey's running out of that gate valve and through that strainer it's right so now you'll see that was the side that we dropped back in very very little honey left in these but there again once the bees clean them up that's okay because they'll take it and they'll put it right back in the in the hive frames and set them in the tank. Corinne will uncap those and we'll spin them. Alrighty. So some of these are not all the way capped and they're not grown out all the way so I just try to get what I can with the knife. It just makes a cleaner cut. Did you take my scratcher? I'm sure I did. Thank you. And then we'll just scratch off the 
flavors. So whatever she's missed with her knife, low spots, spots that wasn't drawn, completely wide enough, she goes back now, So you cleans those up. You need a capping scratcher no matter what tool you use because there's always going to be caps that you can't get to with a knife or a roller or planer or whatever it is. And if you do, you're going to cause damage to the comb and you want to cause the least amount so that way the bees can just reuse that. And you can see the capping scratcher takes a lot longer, so having so a you, knife. Or, you wouldn't recommend doing a full super with your scratcher? No, I would. <laughs> There's easier ways to get it done. Still got honey coming out of the extractor. While we're waiting to load frames. Already got better than an inch in the bottom of the bucket. Bucket gates locked down. And we'll say we've got somewhere around, oh, by now I'd say three quarters of a gallon down inside the uncappings tank. We'll run it probably tomorrow. None of this do you want to allow to set very long uh, hive beetles. Hive beetles are something that eight, ten years ago were not a problem. Now they're a problem. Mm -hmm. People pull honey, bring them in. They want to wait and run that honey in two or three or ten days. And it's, uh, you know, it's just a risk. It's a gamble. This honey is safest on the hive. And after it's off the hive, it's our responsibility to get it in, get it processed, ran, bees, clean it up and get those supers back on or under paramoth so you don't lose it to the, you don't lose your comb to the wax moths. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of things that uh, have to be done to uh, ensure success at this. And, and this is, you know, that comb is invaluable to be given back to them in the spring and uh, they don't have to draw that comb off that foundation with the nectar. They just take that nectar and put it straight in and start drying it and capping it. You can see it's hot enough in here that honey's, when she breaks those cells, it's coming out. I think it looks like we've ran two, four, six, Eight. Looks like we're going to run somewhere around nine supers this time. You know, our, our goal every year, my personal goal, I like to I like to fill a 55 gallon drum. Okay, well, that's awesome if it happens. It's also something that's you know not always doable due to nectar flow being short rain cold weather lots of variations uh, but set yourself a goal uh, keep something in front of yourself to work towards you, you'll be you'll be surprised we've still got still got honey coming out of the gate you can tell the wax that's built up in the strainer again I'll just reach and spin that. And just keep it, just keep it moving. I think that's it. Another load then for the extractor. I guess I'd better get busy.